travel show. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're listening from in the world. My name is Jacqueline Dixon, and you're tuned in to The Ordinary People Show. Ordinary people can do extraordinary things. And we're broadcasting live from Toronto, Canada, powered by GBKM TV Network. So happy to be in studio this morning, ladies and gentlemen, with this well-anticipated interview today, subject matter, and my esteemed panel guest members that are waiting in the wings. I want to first of all thank you so much for your patience in our allowing us to come on air a little bit later than our regular scheduled time. But ladies and gentlemen, I can assure you this topic of conversation is well worth the wait. While all of you are getting your uh, notifications and you're settling yourself down in front of your laptops, your, your uh, uh, mobile phones, or maybe it's your PC device, let me share some information with you so that we can get as much of the community members involved in this conversation today as possible. You're listening to if you're listening to us on radio, you're listening to us on our brand new GBKM website, which is www.gbkm.tv, 24-hour web radio, along with live programming throughout the full course of the week. Maybe you are watching us on our Facebook, GBKM Television. Like and share if you are a, a Facebook user. Or maybe uh, you're watching uh, us on our GBKM TV, which is www.gbkmtv. Regardless of the platform you choose to use, ladies and gentlemen, we want you to like and share this news feed today. Tell a friend to tell a friend to join the discussion because today's discussion is all about you. It's made for you, by you, and it involves you. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, without any further ado, of course, let me start my session off with my show off today with my pleasantries as I always do. First of all, I want to thank my sponsors for allowing us to be on air today. Our number one sponsor is New Era Communications. New Era Communications is a professional sales training platform dedicated to training up and coming entrepreneurs and professional salespeople. Is your company struggling with the sales process? Would you like to know how to drive more revenue through your business? Contact NewEraCommunications.ca. Also, New Era Communications is the producer of the yearly speaker symposium called Meet the Motivators. So meet the motivators, uh, <laughs> celebrating women in leadership. Look out for MTM 2K21 coming soon. Got a little tongue twisted there, guys, but it's all good. Listen, uh, for those of you who do follow me on social media, you know what's going on. The topic is explosive. It's big. It's huge. The topic today is uh, the future of black radio in Canada. And each and every single member of the African diaspora has a right to comment and take part in this discussion. So we want you to message us, whether it's on Facebook, YouTube, um, or uh, our GBKM website, message us and let us know what your opinions are. Maybe you're watching this live, in which case you would like and share the feed, or maybe you're watching this on the rerun. Again, you can still like and share the feed. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be taking my first commercial break and coming back to introduce my panel members, uh, the esteemed guest of panel members, qualified panel members that I have waiting in the wings. And we're going to get this discussion started right away. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the break. Do you believe you could host an entertaining, engaging, and thoughtful weekly show? Or are you a business person or entrepreneur interested in building a brand for yourself? Can you connect with an audience and have strong social media skills? If so, the GBCAM Network would love to invite you to join our team. We're looking for driven, genuine folks who are willing to work hard as an independent broadcaster. If this sounds like you, come join our team. For more information, email your resume to career at gbkm.fm. That is career, C-A-R-E-E-R, -E -E at it's gbkm.fm. It's time to turn your passion into a career. Do you believe... 
Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Ordinary People Show. And I'm your guest, Jacqueline Dixon. Excited to be in studio today and excited to be sharing with you uh, the discussion on the subject matter, which has been really getting quite a few people in the community talking. I've been hearing about a lot of various different opinions on this particular topic of discussion. And I'm excited to invite you into the discussion today. So if you want to take part in the discussion and you're watching us on any of our social media platforms, please put your comments into uh, the, the chat and share them with us. And if it's possible that any of our panel members can address any of them for you, then we're going to be more than happy to do so. Once again, today's discussion is called the the future of Black Radio in Canada, and let me take uh, let let's very quickly introduce our panel members and get started with the discussion right away. Our first panel member is none other than uh, she's my girl, Paula Latang. Paula Latang is a radio an award winning radio host with 1280 CJRU Radio right here in Toronto. For those of you who value campus radio and and the Funkalicious show that is her live and in person. So happy to have her. We also have with us today, ladies and gentlemen, Carrie Lee Crawford. He is the past host. Everybody remembers that sweet, sultry voice in the evenings called Steps After Dark on none other than 98.7 G, 98.7. Carrie Lee Crawford is in the house and he is also live and direct. We also have a Canadian icon with us, a Canadian treasure, Mr. Spider Jones, and he's joining us by phone today. He's a Canadian Hall of Famer and he crosses so many different industries. Uh, we're talking over 30 years in radio. He's currently um, in television right now and he is an accomplished boxer who has made it into the Canadian Hall of Fame and we owe him all of our gratitude for joining us as another esteemed panel member today as well. We also have one other special guest with us today that I had to, I'll tell you the story about him after we get started our discussion. He goes by the name of John Bronski. And John Bronski is also a media uh, person as well and spent over 30 years in media here in, in Canada and internationally. And he's joining us with his comments and his opinions on the topic at hand as well. Welcome, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Good. Thank you. Awesome. Good stuff. Good stuff. So listen, um, I'm just going to have each and every single one of you, uh, before I just bring up that, that this, this first topic in our discussion, just quickly introduce yourself very, very quickly to the listeners, to the viewers, and, and tell them why you believe this topic of discussion is imp of importance to you. Let's start with ladies first. Paula, go ahead, please. Hi everyone, my name is Paula Latang, AKA DJ Lady Funkalicious, and I uh, host a show on CJRU 1280 AM. It's all about the funk, that's the name of the show. And uh, this topic is really important to me because it's very important for us to be seen in media, to be heard in media and to be represented. And I, and, uh, I feel that black radio clearly is a, a place for us to be seen and heard. And um, so that's why it's really important for me. We need to be seen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Carrie Lee. Hi. Again, hey, and, and certainly I'm so humbled and excited to be a part of this illustrious panel hanging out with Funkalicious. And uh, certainly my name is Carrie Lee Crawford, formerly uh, G987 FM, of course, also worked for Flow 93.5, worked at uh, CBC 99.1. I've had, oh, and of course, my humble roots, the beginning at uh, CHRY 105.5. So certainly 25 years of uh, media broadcast experience. Um, again, excited to to uh, get into this conversation and very humbled to be able to share this time with such an esteemed collection of excellent people. Thank you. And I think that it's very important in respects to the topic of the subject that we're discussing, that growing up, not being represented on what we saw uh, in, in, in media was obviously impactful um, and certainly something that uh, you know, where we have our, our culture dictated to us instead of 
it being presented as it is. So seeing one vantage point or specific uh, takes on our culture versus what I my experience of our culture was, was certainly something very concerning for me. And now to 2020, where our culture to a, an extent is being uh, showcased, but only a, a very minute portion or aspect of our culture. So before there was no cultural representation and now it's just a one laser targeted focus, one aspect of the culture being propagated while the 99.9% is subverted. So I feel like that's something that we really certainly need to be aware and to discuss. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was so in depth. Thank you so much. We also have Mr. Spider Jones with us. And once again, I can't keep saying thank you enough to him because you do so much for the community, Mr. Jones. You do so much in, in assisting us um, on all sorts of different levels. And uh, so if you can just introduce yourself there very quickly and share with us why you believe that this topic of discussion is so important for you to participate in. Well, first of all, I, 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 I would uh, take issue to calling me Mr. Jones, like I'm, I'm an old man and the rest of them like Corey or Young. But uh, you call me Spider, first of all, and I'd appreciate that. <laughs> uh, I, I, I've been in radio for 30, pretty close to about 35 years, and, and I think it's, it's, it's it, it, and, and being in mainstream radio, I have seen so, so much systemic racism. And, 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 and one of the things that bothers me is in the media, you always hear a perspective from other people instead of our own. And, and, and I think that's why we need the importance of black radio, black media, so we can bring our own perspective uh, and, 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 and have these stimulating and intellectual conversations and, and, and keep our music alive, too, instead of depending on, on, on a speech expression, but the great white father to give us a little time on the weekends and, and, and things like that to, to, to uh, just to say that we did this. We need this because young black people and people of color need to hear and, 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 and need, to, need to feel like, hey, there's a place for us in radio uh, we want to be embraced instead of feel like we're doing somebody's doing us a favor. And, and lastly, but not least, uh, we need the rest of, uh, of Canada to to understand that black folks drive nice cars, which means we should be sponsored by people like General Motors, Ford. Black folks drink beer, they drink liquor, they buy nice clothes, and we. We, we and yet we have to beg and scrimp for almost every every uh, 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 bit of advertising we get. We don't. We don't, one of the big problems with the black stations now. We can't get that mainstream advertising. Uh, we yeah. need this. So we, and this is why we need black radio. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. We're going to get into all of those, some really valid points you brought up. We're going to get into all of those in our discussion very, very shortly. But let's bring on John Bronski right now. John Bronski, hello. How are you? Tell hey, us you uh, why this topic of discussion is so important to you. Uh, I guess um, from my background, having um, produced, I guess, the longest running Saturday Night Rap show, that's still on the air in Toronto, the Master Plan Show 89.5. Um, and the fact that I'm from London, England originally, so I've seen the change over from when uh, KISS 100 was a pirate radio station, and then it turned into a commercial radio station. And the very brilliant way they did that. And I'm very aware of also the urban market radio network in the United States and how that works and how that provides a revenue for black artists. So when I came back to Canada 2010, and here we are 2020 going on to 2021, we're still having a discussion about Canadian radio. I'm surprised we're still having that discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are listening, who are just tuning in right now, just kind of get getting settled into uh, the program today, uh, there are a number of different reasons why I chose the panel members that I've chosen. And I know that some of you out there that maybe are in the industry or who admire the industry, you're probably asking yourselves this question. What is it about these four individuals that makes them feel that they have the right to talk about this subject matter? 
or what makes them feel that they have any um, knowledge um, of the industry to the extent where they would even host a show like this. And let me tell you why I thought about that because, uh, you know, a number, of, and it's a fair question to ask. Well, well, here's the deal. Each and every single one of our panel members plays a role in the black community where media or radio is concerned, whether it is past or current. That in itself gives us the right to share our opinion, lend our experience, and also talk about the impact and influence that it has had in our own personal lives. So we are speaking from a place of knowledge. So this is why we feel very comfortable in having this discussion and having the individuals that are involved in this panel um, uh, selected. So in my particular case, let me share this with you. I'm going to bring you back to uh, a time uh, in my life. And for those of you who can comment or relate, then please feel free to do so. As a young black child growing up here in Toronto, I didn't see very many people that looked like me. And I certainly didn't see them on television. And, and the few individuals that did show up on, on television were uh, coming, they were coming in from American feeds. And guaranteed, I didn't hear anybody on radio. I grew up with a radio station called WBLK. How many people remember WBLK? Y'all remember that? Okay. Okay, good stuff. So for those of you who, who were raised in, in Canada or Toronto around my time, you will know that the, our, the, closest, the closest we came to having black radio in Canada was WBLK. And, and that was um, what all the black families kind of hovered around listening to. And, you know, we kind of moved that antenna around just, you know, so we don't get the feed because you got how to get the feed, right? Am I right, John? Am I right, Carrie? Oh, no, you're right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, so many, many years later, um, we hear about this gentleman by the name of Denim Jolly. And we're going to start with the Denim Jolly experience. Anybody want to comment on Denim Jolly? Does everybody, everybody knows who he is and what, and, and what, what he brought to the table? For, so Denim Jolly, what he brought to the table was a concept that he believed could actually work here. And was that he felt that we had enough of a population uh, in, in African uh, Canadians were a large enough uh, demographic that it could support a black owned and operated radio station. And the Denim D Jolly uh, business model was one that I never personally agreed with, but I can see where, you know, he would think of, you know, where he, he, he came up with idea. Can you tell me any of the panel members want to contribute to the ben Denim jo Jolly business model? Um, and, and if you know what I'm talking, if you don't, if you know exactly what I'm speaking to, then I can certainly elaborate for you a little bit more. And maybe Carrie, you can start with that one. Let's talk about the Denim Jolly business model. Well, if I could, uh, just momentarily, I just want to say that, yes, Denim Jolly and his business model also predicated and I just want to make sure we, we, we shout it out, um, old school CKLN. I know they've got different call letters now, but um, WBLK and CKLN, um, you know, Ron Nelson, you know what I'm saying? The Fantastic Voyage, um, Dave Ahmad, you know, those influences as well on the urban, the black culture in Canada uh, can never go, of course, um, or we can never overstate that. The master plan, you know, GJX, and, and the family and how Mastermind and DJ X came out of the same camp. And, and you know, just that, that history is something in itself that is, that is just so incredible to look back at. But then fast forwarding as to what was birthed out of that time um, and certainly what dead on his vision and the extent to which he had to undertake the petition that Denim had to undertake in order even to, to have the opportunity um, and opportunities, because how many times did he apply for a license? It wasn't just one application, it was a, a repeat process. And, you know, we think about the music video. Who has to do a music video in order to, to campaign and, and, and advocate for, to have a voice? What other community 
and, and I, I'm, just, I'm that guy, so I'm just going to put it out there, right? So, I mean, what other communities have to go to that extent just to have a voice? There are people who have been here a decade that have a voice. You know what I mean? Black, black people, Afro-Canadian, Caribbean, we've been here for hundreds of years in certain instances, and still in 2020, still advocating. Now, of course, we know 2000, in 1999 and 2000 that that, uh, that flow did come online. And we know, of course, with Fitzward voting, and I'm sure we'll get to that, you know, G987FM coming online. But my point is, and it, it, it's just been such a battle to get to that point. The, 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 the leaps and the bounds and the hoops that we had to jump through in order to get there was not accidental. And I, I find it ironic, and I am going to speak to uh, your, your question, but I just find it ironic that uh, 1949, WERD, the first Black-owned radio station in the United States, the also turbulent and the also racist United States of America, they're so racist there, but they had Black radio in 1949, in the 50s, propagating the messages and getting the voice of the people out to the people, right? <laughs> how long did it take us to get a voice of black people in Canada and how quickly was that voice taken away? How quickly before Flo was sold against the, the, the charted and, and prescribed leg, uh, legislative um, prescribements, right? That, that Flo wasn't supposed to be sold if you look at, you know, how, which is why they were sued. The yeah. CRTC was sued successfully, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and then same thing with G987. Right. Well, G98, I'm going to jump in and say, G98, I think that's a different can of worms altogether, and we're going to get into that. I think that's a whole different can of worms. But going back to, you know, Paula, do you got, what, what's your take on the Denim yeah, Jolly? I, I, wanted, I wanted to say that, you know, with the Denim Jolly um, uh, plan that he had was really to try to bring all the communities together, all right. the music, everybody. And I think that that in itself was a huge task to undertake on its own. Right. I mean, because as... Um, as black people, we have so much diversity, so much to give. So we've got soca and we've got reggae, we've got compa, we've got soup from the French Caribbean, we've got R and B, we've got soul, we've got all of these music, all of these genres that when you look at a country music station, it's just doing country. It can focus specifically on country. All its dollars can go there. We've we're so diverse that I think it was definitely a huge undertaking. I understand what it is that he wanted to do and certainly to um, give voice to the community as diverse as we were, are still, sorry. But I think it, would, it was hard, it would, it would be hard. And I also feel that based on what Carrie is saying also, uh, I think at that time, um, um, the main um, Rogers or Chum had bought off so many um, radio stations that it made it difficult for Flo to be able to compete in terms of advertising dollars. They just couldn't. It, it, you know, so I think that that was also a difficult road for them to travel. So there were a number of factors, I think, that were affecting that success. Right. Yeah, there are. And you know what? I did my research on this a little. I'm telling I compiled so much information, so much data. And I believe that there were so many extenuating factors that went into that final decision that uh, Mr. Jolly made in order to to sell. And personally, at the end of the day, I think he made the right move um, mm -hmm. uh, to sell. Uh, I, I think at the end of the day, uh, this was a business move. And as much as he wanted to bring this forward for his community, um, you have to also think from a business perspective, what is the likelihood of this being a sustainable business, a viable business over time? And it was starting to show cracks in the system and he got out at a time where it was worth paying a reasonable amount of money for and uh, and I think he left the the industry respectfully you know unlike 98s but but John jump in there real quick because I got you know we want to get to some hot button topics uh, you know what the denim jolly uh, business model what, what, uh, what I'm you... me personally I have no idea because um, I had come back in 2010 so I think what I for, see the thing I've noticed is that there were a lot of personalities that could have made a huge difference starting as early as 1996. And I think time has been lost. And I think the time has passed. Uh -huh. oh, I mean, you had, imagine if Master T had a radio show as early as 1996. 
which you just came on the air. Yeah. The first time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Can imagine where we'd be at by now. Right. And <laughs> And that's a great segue. Thank you so much. Um, and again, we're going to get, ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere. It's going to get deep. It's going to get pretty, pretty, pretty testy here in a little bit. I can tell you that because I'm going to bring up some topics. Um, but we're going to take it slow. We're laying the foundation for you, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who want to know what are we talking about, we're laying the foundation for you. We're le we, uh, we're, we're setting the, the stage so that you understand the storyline, that how it started, how it came about, the WBLK thing, and then from WBLK, then, you know, the question is, what came first, the chicken or the egg? In other words, what came first? Was it Master T or Michael Williams? Do you know what I mean? So we started to see some black faces on television, not, not, not black owned stations, but we started to see some black faces on television doing things that black people can relate to and spinning tunes that black people enjoyed listening to so that's the that's the next question who came for what came first uh who came first michael williams or master t bronski take oh, that one away oh michael williams definitely came first yeah. definitely michael williams yeah. Do we owe a Michael great deal Williams. of respect to Michael Williams, guys? Michael Williams. Oh yes, I, I would think so. But it's yeah. also two different. I'm, I, I'm, I'm a Carrie could understand too. When you're a 55 year old b boy, you you look at things differently than most people. <laughs> so, um, I see the frustration with like kids today are not interested in Sarah Vaughan or Duke Ellington. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like we're the last generation of people. Yeah. in our culture who understand that history yes and, and had an appreciation for the history and an appreciation for that yeah. even though we weren't born during the time we still understood that yeah. that exactly. was the foundation the musical cultural foundation of everything that we were experiencing in our time was based in a time before we were here but still you could see it's like cousins you could see the relations you could see the, the sequential uh continuation evolution of it and this is what it's very curious that you bring that up because there's such a disconnect with everything up until a certain such point. a huge disconnect now such, such a yeah. huge yeah. generational disconnect i mean like um I'm, i have a great relationship with my son and i'm a long distance parent my, my son lives in helsinki finland so it's not like i could go pick him up from school and see what he's doing speak up a little bit for us john please oh sorry i i i i'm a long distance parent so it's different for me so i have to i actually communicate through social media and through that i get a good understanding of what my son is like and he's not narcissistic he hasn't bought in to the methodology or the narcissism of social media mm -hmm. so I, i'm i'm ha when i see that i i think that the, the future of hip-hop and black culture is safe because that's what's going to happen Hip-hop reinvents itself when the black teenager reinvents himself. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the invention, it, it's, it's interesting because it, it, we're talking culture, right? And so what came first, the chicken or the egg? Um, what came first? Was it that the, the culture was, was propagated to us? Or, or I felt like we invented it. I feel like at that time, there was no definition of real hip hop we, we were we were cutting the, the brush we were creating it as we went as, as, we, as we developed right the best way being to, right? back to the original question i think the uh, history came first so michael williams came first mm -hmm. and then the culture in terms of how it was displayed that that was master t mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and just so that the listeners and viewers understand who we're talking about, because there's a lot of there's been a lot of addition to the black community since we were growing up as kids. OK, a lot of people have come well after the WBL. They ain't going to remember that, Paula. Right. They're not going to no. remember that. They don't understand how we had to sit around on Saturday morning and wait for that one black face to show okay. up on much TV, much, you know, much music. And, and Michael so Williams would come out and we'd be feeling so proud, right? Mm -hmm. They don't Absolutely. get that. They came long after when things were kind of, you know, getting on their way. So Michael Williams, 100%, I'm in a total agreement. He deserves a whole lot of respect um, mm -hmm. because he was the first, you know, black face and a very intelligent man. Very, very intelligent man, um, and, and and Spider, you know Michael very, very well. What's your what's your do, what's your take on that? Well, first of all, Michael Williams, uh, he had the soul of the city back in the seventies. Can you speak and, up for us, Spider, please? Uh, he, uh, Michael Williams, can you hear me now? It's better. 
Yeah, Michael Williams was the host of Soul in the City and probably the first black VJ in Canadian history. Right. Very intelligent, uh, university degree. But more than that, he knew his music. He was a... Uh, he, 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 he was a, a, one of the forerunners and he, and, and, and I tell you, uh, I, I, Michael and I are very close friends and because I was doing radio when he was doing, uh, television and, and, and some of the things we had to put up with. And that's, that's why we need black radio and black media because people like Michael Williams who paved the way aren't being remembered by mainstream media. And yet his program was so popular and he right. brought us, you know, and, and you're right. We saw ourselves in that. And, and he, he probably inspired so many people. Yeah. He inspired uh, me because yeah. of what he wanted. Yeah. To he inspired me yeah. as you, as did you spider inspired me. Big you, you and Michael inspired me. Master T. I was already doing my thing with master T like love master T. Um, and what he did and how he how he evolved, but yeah. you and Michael Williams and Ron Nelson, you know what I'm saying? Uh, DJ X, y- y'all in, like y- guys inspired. I was inspired as a kid at home. I was inspired by watching what you guys are doing. That's why I was able to do and do what I'm doing right now. And what I've done was the squarely based on the hope uh, that you guys provided me because I I saw you. I saw the battle. I know it wasn't easy, and that's right. why I'm like even being on here with Spider. I'm like Spider. You know, order of Phoenix. <laughs> I'm like Spider the Man. I, you know, that's I just want to put it out there. Sorry to cut you off. You know, Michael. Michael. Michael was our Don Cornelius with that great voice. Mm. That great mm-hmm. voice he had, and he was our Don Cornelius in a sense. Yes, but, you know, he was. Yeah. He yeah. was. He was I our think- version of Don Cornelius. Will you agree with that one, Paula? I do, but I also think it would, would have been a difficult. Um, a hard time for Michael because he was the only one out there. The only one. Right? And, uh, and, and he was blackballed, by the way. He was What's blackballed. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to yeah. be that person, which is why I think that um, for for black music, black radio, black television, uh, it's really important that we get our youth in there with the education behind them so that they can, you know, um, come forward and be heard. And we, in order for us to have change, especially at the those areas that we're not in, we all we need to be there and in order to be there um, so that we can tell our stories and we can um, change the direction. Because I don't think that there are a lot enough of us in those positions where decisions are being made. And I think if- Can I just mention something? Uh, yeah. Can I jump in for a second? Yeah, go ahead. Let's- I got to tell you, when we talk about Michael Williams, there's an, a, another great voice here that's never been recognized the way it should, and that's uh, Norman Richmond. Okay. Uh, Absolutely, Norman is oh a yeah. wealth of information. I mean, yeah. he's the type of person that really should be on on yeah. Yeah. on this black guy radio. Did so much, yeah, so much to to keep black music alive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In, in, in a white bread city. Right. Uh, and, it, you know, it, it, I've had both of them on my show many times, along with Jojo Cento and Master P, and we've had many conversations. We even tried to get a, a, a show on mainstream uh, media. And, and, and I tell you, even during my show, there were many times when I would come in and out of a, a, a topic or in and out of a commercial playing great soul music, and, and they would send down a, a, an email or, or a text, play something we know. Yeah, they, because these, these, were, these, were, these were white uh, 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 program managers who just could not relate uh, to, to, to the kind of music I played, maybe Earth, Wind, yes. and Fire, or Smokey Robinson, or right. the Commodores. You know, they couldn't relate to but, very white like I could. Mm-hmm. And Spider, that's why we need to be at those tables. We're not there, and that's the problem. And I think that a lot of the time we are, uh, we love the music, we do, you know, whatever genre it is, is a black music that we love, but we need to be at the table. And really, you know, education, is key, uh, you know, sure you can do it, you know, um, off the cuff, off the top, spend a number of years with experience, but the education is the part. And I think that, you know, we need to encourage our youth to 
to uh, get that. Well, that's a great segue. You know what, Paula? I'm going to jump in there and I'm going to say that's a great segue to our next to our next topic here. Yeah, education. So when you talk about education, you're talking about Master T. You're talking about Michael Williams. These are two highly educated black people. Highly educated. And I wonder if people t in today's radio um, even recognize the level of education that these gentlemen came with back in the day, okay? Where it was even, it far surpassed uh, a number of their colleagues, which their counterparts, which were Caucasian. But like the story goes, so often both of these individuals got pushed out. Okay. Yeah, no, look, let me jump Both in here. Both of this them got great. pushed out. Uh, I not just them, a whole lot of other guys were also pushed out. Yeah. Right. And why they got pushed out, this is where we're going now. Why did they get pushed out? Because we didn't own anything, right? So we didn't own anything. We were as much as 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 much as a, of an influence as we were, and as as powerful as these two gentlemen were within our communities. We didn't own anything, so we didn't. At the end of the day, it's just like you're saying, uh, Paula. We were not at the decision making table, so therefore we could not control the outcome of our own, uh, you know, uh, destiny uh, because we didn't own not anything. At the table then nobody is going to speak on your behalf. That's correct. And that's why I'm saying, you know, right now, um, you know, if if there are youth or whatever age you are at, really, and you want to get involved in the industry, it's not just about, I mean, it's about the love of the music. I get it. But, okay. you know, at the end of the day, the radio station is a business. Yes, and it so, is. Right? And so right. you need to know how to run a business, how to be in a business, how to be in the business of radio. So, like, you know, I'm at Ryerson, so, yes, there's the Radio and Television Arts Program at Ryerson, and it's a four-year degree, and it covers everything that <laughs> students will need to know. There are other, um, uh, you know, colleges, et cetera. I'm just speaking with regards to Ryerson, because I'm at Ryerson, Ryerson Radio. Um, but with all of that, then there are, there are more black youth doing radio and television arts right now, which is wonderful, because right. they will create their own peer groups. And within that, start to maybe one day create their own radio station because they've got the knowledge and they've got the connections and the network, which Good. is so important. That's Good. important as well. All right. So now let's fast track. Did somebody, Carrie, did, Carrie, did you have a comment? I, know, I was just going to say that it, it's interesting because just like we have book smarts and, and that type of knowledge and street smarts, it's the same thing in broadcast. So you can, you can get your mm -hmm. broadcast discipline your perspective and, and your, your theoretical education but there's also the practical right there's the street interactive and what i find is the nuance the reason why there's been so much struggle in respects to creating a successful model for the urban and quote unquote black uh a media form format um is because <laughs> it doesn't subscribe to 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 uh, rules or books or philosophies or theories, it is lived, it is cultural, it is yeah. emotional, and it may not make sense. So I find that in my experience through from CBC to Flow to, to G987, really curiously is how sometimes people try to quantify sentiment. And you know, how to quantify the sentiment. And John Browski can speak to this because I think that like me and John, I said, Jay Martin would say me and John go back like car seats. You know I'm saying like, we are, old, we are old school in that, you know, we're you know, 14 years old, 15 years old. What are you doing at concert hall, right? I'm not doing that concert hall at 14 years old, 50, but you know what? We were chasing the culture, right? right. And, and it was a culture that was not represented not represented. I couldn't find me. I couldn't, I couldn't see myself anywhere. I didn't fit in anywhere. So when you found something that felt right, then you certainly acclimated. You, you did what you had to do to get, to get there. So again, my, you know, what, what Paula said was dead on, but at the same time, right. um, there has to be there's a little bit of both. That's why I was saying you can love the music, which is amazing, but you've got to bring something else with it so right. that you can, right. Yeah. right. It, it's going to be, Big it's time. the culture. And, yeah. and this is why, you know, Spider is why I really want to hear so much from Spider because I've been involved, but not as long as Spider's been involved from behind the scenes, like Master T behind the scenes, like Michael Williams behind the scenes, that dynamic, right? 
And so when people don't understand the cultural relevance, this, this may not translate today, but what you're, the seed you're planting will manifest and blossom into something tomorrow, right? People don't understand that if it's not their culture, if right. it's not their right. interest. You're right, yeah. you're right, Gary. And that's why I was saying that in order to get to the to where you can and any and as Jack Jacqueline was saying, in order to get to where you can start to make the changes, you've got to be at the table. At the table. Yeah. So yeah. important. Yeah. So let's yeah, fast track. So yeah, let's sorry. fast track now. Cause I think we've laid a pretty good foundation now for the listeners and the viewers. They get they get it. They understand, you know, the storyline. So let's fast track now. We fast track to a more recent time. Denim Jolly comes on board, a successful businessman, black businessman in the community um, of Jamaican descent, you know, woo woo. And uh, <laughs> of course, the whole flow thing happened, and uh, we're pleased, we're happy. We're, we, you know what? Flow left a good taste in my my mouth. I think he respectfully left the scene. Uh, well, um, well he, he left with his respect, and his dignity, and his money. Okay, and kudos to him as a business person for that. Now we we get introduced to this gentleman by the name of Fitzroy Gordon. How many of y'all knew Fitzroy Gordon on a personal note? How many of you? Well, I worked with him on a I personal him, uh, note. From yeah, you I did? knew him personally. Spider, go ahead, please. Well, I worked with him. Uh, they, we used to call him Doctor Love. Doctor Love. And, uh, <laughs> I worked with him at uh, CFRB and a couple other places, and uh, uh, he was a. We had a lot of fun together. Uh, always a lot of laughs. He was on. I'd have him on my show as a special guest. But uh, uh, I mean, what these guys went through to try to put those stations together, they went through hell. I mean, how many rejections? Uh, you know, uh, nine years. Uh, uh, pardon nine me. Years. It was yeah. nine years. Um, 90 G 98.7 was nine years in the making before it aired. It debuted its first song nine years. Yeah. And, and, and the point, you know, he, he, here's the point. Just, just my own personal opinion. When you have a black owned station and you want to go mainstream, you need, uh, you need financial support, which means we need, other things are factors are, are factors here. We need people in the boardrooms of the large corporations so that we can get some of that big money these other stations are getting. They're way ahead of us because of that. We are fighting systemic racism all the way. Even people that pretend they're not underneath, they don't give us, they don't give us, they don't look at us seriously. Afterthought. But but you know what though, and, and this is now where we can start to become a little bit more free with our, our comments here. I mean, yeah, I, I don't think anybody on this panel will disagree that there's systemic racism. I don't think anybody on this panel would, will disagree that the system was not built for us. And how could it be built for us when it wasn't made by us? So I always tell people all the time, why do you keep saying that the system wasn't built? What it, the system isn't for you? Of course it cannot be for you. You it wasn't built by you so so how can it emulate anything about you so and where I'm going with this is in in Fitzroy's case um, and I knew him on a personal basis maybe not as close as some other people do but my first time I met Fitzroy Gordon was in the halls of York University if you remember campus radio 105.5 okay 105.5 was holding it down back in the day, along with CKLN as well, right? And I met him there in the corridors um, in the years that he was uh, propositioning CRTC in order to get a license to open up this station. And he was, at that time, he was collecting signatures. And every time I'd go by there, I'd see him in conversation with people in the halls because it was a pretty busy place there. And, you know, I put certainly put down my signature, but he was collecting signatures in order to present to CRTC a valid business uh, proposal <laughs> as to why he should be granted um, licensing to open up another radio um, a station. And um, do you guys remember that? Do you, do you, all, do you remember 105.5? Yeah, okay, I good. Do. I do. I did a show on 105.5 for 15 years. Okay. I did Experience Creole on uh, 105.5. What, what was your show, Paula? Experience Creole. Uh, music you from were the Experience Creole. <laughs> Get out of here. 
No, so, I mean, yeah, that's, so that's, I did that. That's, that's, that's my first my first experience with radio. Yeah. Right? Yes. CHRY, uh, the defunct, Blueprint. unfortunately. Wow, but, I um, didn't I know that either. When it went defunct too, so that was a bit of a shocker. Um, but yes, I was I was definitely there at the time when um, all the petitioning was going around for that. And I, but I, but I also feel that at that time people want were willing to support the idea of another black radio station, but many were a little bit hesitant, and some had lost some trust in the community because. Uh, and the idea of it because of what was um, offered in the first time around, and then they were hopeful that they would be heard this time around. And, and I feel that some people have felt that that didn't happen for them again. So I, I yeah, but I was there when that was happening, Gary. Okay. So, and the reason why I'm bringing that up, and John, jump in any time, um, the closest that, you know, uh, we had come at one point where it was community radio. And community radio has played a very, very, very valid role and a very important role, a very influential role in our experience as black members of the black community. Would everybody agree with that? Yeah. Campus radio? Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Big time. Very vital, very vital. <laughs> right, and but and that, but, and. I, with that said, I'm going to have to interject and say something that may upset a lot of people. Go ahead. I don't think G97 has gone because of racism. I just think it's gone because it was just bad radio. We're going to get on that one. We're going to, don't you worry. We're not going to finish this. To talk about that. To, to, we're going to, yeah. I can't wait. Yeah, we're going there next. We're going there next. Okay, but we want to give our props. We want to give our, show our respect to Campus Radio and the fact that Campus Radio was holding it down for the black community for, Absolutely. for years okay. upon years. Okay, and this is my and thing Campus too. Radio, Campus Radio is still doing that right now, but Campus Radio, I mean, we're talking about Toronto, but Campus Radio um, has been supporting black music across, you know, the other uh, provinces as well. So, you know, it's it's the place where we get our voice, whether you're in Vancouver or you're in Halifax or in Montreal or Toronto, um, it's where we get our, it's where we get a voice. So, you know, yeah. uh, outside of campus radio, I we I don't know where we'd be heard. Yeah, Especially I agree with you. Talk about prior to 2000, when I was at CHRY, when I started there, um, the internet was kind of still new. And so you would only be able to really communicate with your community locally outside of that. If we didn't have that, I don't know who would be talking for us. I don't know where we would be heard. 100%. And, 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 and I got to tell you, if you look at campus radio and then you go into the, 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 the R&B and jazz spots in Toronto, most of the, the those kids who went there got there because they listened to campus radio and they discovered R&B and, and not just the, the new stuff, but old R&B. And you, I, I remember there were a club, there was a club on college. I forget the name of it, but it was jammed every night and they bring these R&B bands. So, mm -hmm. and that was because of, of campus radio supporting, uh, uh, having shows where they, they, they played the R&B music and, and schooled, schooled a lot of not just black kids, but white kids. Right. Right. Big time. <laughs> Big Can time. I make a point with that too? So I come from an era of radio that represented the time in Toronto where we were really kicking it. So like 1989 um, to about 1996, I started on CHRY with Gary Wright and oh, even Mastermind was Gary there. Gary Wright! Yes! Yes! yes. I'm not here today. That's awesome. I'm telling so you, this is a nostalgic I, walk today. Is, yes, but that was the thing though. And this is the point I'm going to make. We had a really lot of great radio. How come... Okay, again, so mastermind. We had a lot of really good type guys, people, motion, my co-host in the master plan show. Okay, okay, here's my example. So I grew up listening, going to New York City in the summertime, listening to Molly Mall or Red Alert and the world famous Supreme Team. Okay, now that's what influenced my sound to produce the master plan show, because if you listen to it, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like a New York City Saturday Night Rap show, right up until now. A lot of people ask Hello? me, how come, where, where is the DJ X's and the John Brownskis 2021? Where are the kids today representing that style, that, that flavor, that culture on the radio? What happened? It's if like we went backwards instead of going forward. You know, I, I totally get that feeling too. 
I really do. Um, it, I think we did, John. I'm going to agree with you on that one. I feel that we... I feel we went backwards. In all honesty, I feel 98.7, and this is where you, you, you were saying that people are going to, maybe they're not going to like what you, 98.7 brought you us backwards. Talk about, you I, talk, I'm going to tell you, if that's party, my personal opinion party, on that. We had this party called the Bump and Hustle, and I got a very famous DJ friend. His name is Mr. Paul Lee Lopez. And you know, Mike, Mike Toe is my cousin. <laughs> okay, Carrie, and Carrie. Totally does. Hey, and, and that's guys, another story. Hold on, and these guys were in, these, these guys were innovators of a song called Acid Jazz and Rare Groove and all that stuff, mm -hmm. which is pretty much what white yuppies listen to. So I was shocked when none of the stations decided to get none of these guys and put them on the station. Okay, but wait, stay right there, stop right there, because that we're gonna get into that now, because you touched on it and Paula touched on it. Paula touched on the essence of radio commercial radio which is that it is also a business it is a business and like any other business in order for it to be sustainable it must generate revenues and the revenues have to exceed their liabilities and the, oh you know what we're going to take a quick commercial break because now we're going to get now now we're going to get into this it's just about, about to get into that Jacqueline. Okay. Okay. ladies and gentlemen don't go anywhere we're just getting started uh on uh, gbkm tv ladies and gentlemen it's about the future of black radio in canada don't don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Hello, my name is Ryan Knight, the co-founder and executive director of the Afro-Caribbean Business Network Foundation. I am here excited to announce the new microloan program that we have put together. With the support of Alterna Savings Credit Union and the partnership of Setsi, Empowered Forex, and the Dream Legacy Foundation, we're going to be helping more entrepreneurs of African and Caribbean heritage get access to funding and help with their grant writing. Please visit our website, acbncanada.com, to learn more if you're an entrepreneur that's in need of funding or if you would love to support this organization. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Welcome back to The Ordinary People Show. My name is Jacqueline Dixon, and I'm your host, and I'm excited today to be bringing you a topic of discussion that is heated. It's loaded, ladies and gentlemen. It's powerful, and it's also exciting. Very, very necessary topic of discussion for members of the black community, especially those who are interested in media, television, and radio. The topic of discussion today is the future of black radio in Canada. As many of you know, recently, uh, the last uh, the, the one and only and the very last black radio station uh, under the name of G98.7 came to its demise. The uh, founder and owner of that station was none other than Mr. Fitzroy Gordon. And we show, uh, we give him all the respect in the world. Kudos to him for being a pioneer, one of the pioneers, of course, in that industry. And even... Uh, wanting to take on that arduous task, that challenge of having to fight CRTC uh, for some nine years before finally getting uh, the licensing and approval to go ahead. And let me just, uh, just a very quick statement here that uh, from June 15th of 2010, uh, Fitzroy Gordon had, uh, if he had any doubts about the merits of his nine year struggle to launch Caribbean and African the Caribbean and African radio network, he was reassured by the 1,000 emails that he received five hours into the station's test launch on G98.7 FM um, in June of 2010. Do you remember that? I remember I was driving in my car, I'll never forget that, mm -hmm. and we had been told about the anticipated start of this uh, radio station, G98.7, and I had it on, the dial was on G98.7, and I was literally in my car driving when they went live uh, for the very first time, and it was such an emotional experience for me, it was such an emotional moment in my car, I was hearing my music, I was hearing I was hearing music and lyrics that I could relate to that I was familiar with and it was an exciting um, experience. I'll never forget that moment in my car when they finally went live after nine years of, yeah. of attempting to do so. But uh, they did go live, they became a, a business and, and that's exactly what the radio station was. It was a business. 
And right now, um, as we speak, uh, Mr. Fitzroy Gordon, um, um, you know, may he rest oh, yeah. in peace, is, is, is passed away. And um, the station has been sold. So right before the break, we were talking, we just quickly touched on the fact that radio is a business. And being that it is a business, it has to operate like a business. And I'm going to ask you very quickly, each panel member, very quickly, before we talk about you know the details here, what is it that you believe was the demise of G98.7? If you could pinpoint any one thing, what do you believe that it was? I'm going to start with you, John. Uh, bad music programming. Bad programming. Okay. All right. Bad music programming. Bad music programming. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. Paula? I would I would second that. I think there was a I, I get the concept of what wanted to be done, but I think that it could have been fine-tuned much better. Yeah. Music programming again. Okay. Uh Carrie. Way too much, too much to detail, detail quickly. quickly. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Can you repeat that? You were frozen just for a moment. Yeah, I said way too much to be able to answer. I love one. being. Just give in, us one. I love being on the inside. I'd say bureaucracy. You know, bureaucracy. the politics. The politics behind the scenes of G987 was, as a educated, you know, bachelor degree holding, you know, career tenured, experienced um, professional, successful professional. I mean. <laughs> generated multi-millions, I have never in my life experienced what I experienced at G987. It, I have learned so much. Um, it's just so sad of how it, how it came about, but there is just so much going on behind the scenes, so much maneuvering, so much bureaucracy, so much politics. Um, and again, very quickly, being an artist, so being a fan, to evolving into an artist or a producer who, of course, produced Sean Paul and Elephant and, and, and Carnell and all Socrates and Julie Black and all these things, to evolving from a producer, Baby Blue, touring around the world, trying to get your music played, to then going into a content creator, a, a broadcaster with, you know, CBC and, and, and Flow 93.5 playing on Flow, DJing on, on Flow and DJing on uh, on. G98 7 FM, I've been able to see it from three different vantage points, the whole uh, culture and the business as, as a whole. And so everything, you know, obviously that has been conveyed thus far in respects to the programming at G98 7, I, I, yeah, I just, the things I've seen, I cannot even believe okay. I was seeing. Them. And you that's know? why you're on the panel. Yeah. That's why yeah. you're here. That's why you're here, and Spider. In, 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 do you have quickly, if there's one thing that you could pinpoint um, as to what was the demise, uh, what you know, what became the the, the demise for ninety eight point seven? What would you say that it was? Crabs in a barrel. Crabs in a well, barrel. Everybody thinking. Everybody thinking. No, I'm so sorry, smoke. Carrie. I'm, I'm oh, crabs oh. in a barrel. Yeah. Okay, we got you on that. I, I, that should. That question was meant for Spider. Sorry. Oh, sorry about that. Were you talking to me? Yes. Okay, I, I, to me, it, it, it's, it, uh, I believe the station format tried to, please, uh, tried to please all of the people all of the time in terms of the different diverse communities, black communities. And there was certain music on there that I, that I enjoyed because I'm an R&B guy, but there's other music that is different because of, we, we all come from, we may be black, but we come from different cultures. Right. And so we don't enjoy the same things. And, and, and because of the way they tried to do that, they weren't getting the big money. You got to get, get the good money. I hate to say, but you got to get white folks money. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, here's my two cents. First of all, I agree with every one of you guys. But I think Carrie hit the nail on the head with the behind the scenes bureaucracy and, and BS that was going on in that very mm -hmm. amateur uh, setup going on. Very amateur. You could see it. And any educated professional could okay. see that that was an amateur setup that they had going on over there. CHRY was run better. CHRY. Yeah, big time. Big time. Yeah. Neil Armstrong, Neil Armstrong ran CHRY better than Fitzroy Gordon ran 98.7. But that's why I'm saying you really needed people that understood radio and what 
you had to do within it. It wasn't just about the music. I mean, and I get it, you know, it's also bringing the culture, but you can bring the culture. But if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, believe- fair. Yeah. Now let's let's just talk about this black radio because because Spider touched on something too. I'm gonna go off the limb and I'm gonna say that you know what was see was was 98.7 really black radio or was it Caribbean radio? Do you know what I'm trying to say? It was a soca station. It was well, a Car- it, because okay, you know Caribbean Jacqueline, radio Jacqueline, and black radio. It was a soca station. Are sure. two different things. It, it wasn't was Caribbean stuff. enough for me because it left out the Zouk and the Compa from the French. Creole okay, Caribbean. so like, then we can real. even. It was, it, was, it was a closet soca station. We can on. drill it down. It wasn't even soca because you hear what Paula said. Paula said it didn't, you know, there's there so many aspects. Every time uh, I turned on, all it was was soca. I mean, my white friends were like, why is, what's with this soca? Yeah, it was just the same thing. It was <laughs> the same. So you can't say that it was black. Ra- In my opinion, this is my opinion. My opinion, you can't really call that black radio. You, they had pigeonholed themselves into such a small, small, um, uh, you know, area of, of segment of the black community that it would have been impossible for them to sustain themselves financially because you don't appeal to everybody in the black community. And, and, and argue about it every single day. And argue about it because you know the too many too many chiefs, not enough Indians. Right. And- so Carrie, um, um, Jack, would you mind if I? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so what was the roadblock to? I mean, and I I'm speaking from the experienced Creole person. I mean, I do funk and soul now, but from that person, I mean, when they started, they did have a little bit of zouk, they did have a little bit of compa, and that was because of Roger Day was part of that and. Roger Day and I were in regular communication about that. And I even said, listen, you don't need, if you can't find a radio program for it or an hour, let me, let me give you my expertise and share that music so that at least others can be introduced to it because community radio was allowing me to introduce others that were not even black to the French Creole Caribbean, but my own community, my own quote unquote radio was like, no hands off. What yeah. was that yeah. about? Yeah, and we're going to talk about, you know, is somebody, I think it was John, John said it had bad music programming. Uh, like I said, I think everybody, everybody's, there were so many reasons, right? But I'm going to give you from a different perspective as well, because I always have my business hat on. And just to let you know, so Paula knows my background um, as my, my, uh, on a professional level. So I am a, I'm a professional sales trainer, okay? So I train salespeople and business and entrepreneurs on sales and the sales process. And I train them on learning how to respect the sales process enough to know that without a, without a, a, a strong sales department, a strong vision for sales, that you're not going to be able to generate enough revenue to sustain this wonderful idea that you have. So although you might have the best idea in the world, you might have the fanciest website, you might be located in the best location, unless you can generate enough revenue to sustain that business, it's going to fail. And what I was able to quickly see from, from, from this uh, station was that they pigeonholed themselves into just such a small market that they would have never been able to generate enough money to, to keep that place going from the, the people that they, you know, from the, the target markets of the people. Those people don't spend money. We well, need, if, if, just if, if, like if, Spider if, said, we need white people money. Yeah, but That's if, the if, type if, of money that you need. It's the truth. It, it, we need we need we need the big corporate money and 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 one hand washes another. We need we need people in we need uh, people that believe that uh, that radio right. station is reaching reaching more than just the black community. Well, okay. So if I may, if I may, uh, a couple of things. So 2014, like the revenues, or 2013 into 14, the revenues were were 3.1 million. Like they 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 weren't. Um, you know, some of the, you know, they weren't 98.1, you know, they weren't, they weren't KISS, but, you know, they, in respect of to uh, the, the, the strength of the signal, which the signal was compromised, like if you're east of Markham Road, you, know, Road, you were losing, the, yeah. you could get it in Belleville, right? 
you know, you can get it in Belleville, but if you were east of Markham Road in Toronto and certainly in the Durham region, there was, there was blackout spots, you know, in respect. And that's another story in itself that I would love to talk to. Right. That's another story. But here's, here's my thing. Um, a thousand ways to skin a cat. And you guys all prefaced it that, you know, <laughs> black culture. What is black culture? We are, we are, not, a, we are not a color. What yeah. is that? You know, we're not monolithic at all. Forest, right. And, and so many different cultural expressions. And so what I thought Fitzroy was brilliant at is he, re I have never, and I, I, you know, rest in peace. I'm very honored to have been able to be mentored by him. I, I have never met an individual that was as in tune to a, a people, uh, to a culture, to a community to a society, a country, I've never met somebody as in tune as him. That man was incredible. However, point, case in point, what Fitzroy would say, what his decree would be versus how it was executed. Wow. I'm, I'm okay, that's chair. good. Big right? time. So here's my first question though, okay? So if he was that in tuned, if he had done so much research, if he was so knowledgeable about black radio in Canada, then why is it that everybody from 105.5, basically he raped and pillaged all of the, the broadcasters which were working for free that really didn't, didn't really not educated to any, any degree in radio and broadcasting. He raped and pillaged everybody from 105. One day they were on 105 and the next day they're on 98.7. Like, like what, like really? Where's Michael Williams? Where's Master T? Where, you know, where's Spider Jones? Where are the people that- Where's John Bronski? Where's John Bronski? Exactly. So, I mean, are you gonna try to tell us that this is the composition? This is the composition of black radio in Canada? Well, here's I think really that the problem was that there's probably, I mean, and it's not, I, I don't know for sure, but I'm going to guess that there were just not a lot of people that wanted to participate. Maybe they knew all about what you were talking about, Carrie Lee. Maybe they knew. No, John? Uh, well, they knew. Here's, here's what thing. I think. Oh, well, here, here's what I think. And Carrie, here's a, here, you want to know why I, I moved to Finland? Please, please do share because I was tired of I was tired of explaining the obvious to black people. Are you tired of explaining the obvious to black people. Obvious, okay. After my experience, because you remember I did the co front album back in nineteen you know my background with Sean Paul and Jeremy Harding with that yeah, 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 yeah. of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. That whole thing about the deal and because it was Mr. Morgan that hooked us up and that was the thing. We could never have done that in Canada. Never. And, and the same same reason why Russ Harger left Canada. Where's like Russ? Yeah, come on. Yeah, like we know what, so you like, understand how the pedigree exactly, right? So a lot of us left here because, dude, I, I got it. If you if I got to explain, let's that, just be I'm straight, right. John. Just be straight. You left because of lack of respect. You felt that you no, weren't getting no, the respect that you no, so no, rightfully earned. Let's no, just I, be straight. I, I, no, no, no. I'll explain it this way. I left because if I got to explain that a gold record in Canada is 50,000 units and a, a platinum record is 100,000 units to a wannabe music artist in, 19, in 2001, that's why am I educating like that? You, if you're trying to be a rec recording artist, you should know that information already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, 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 you know, Carrie. <laughs> Carrie, let me tell you, you know what, Carrie, let me tell you, so one of the things that pissed me off about G98.7 as well, okay, um, it was an insult to a lot of people's intelligence in many cases. Um, there are some very well-educated black people that, that know their stuff, that can present themselves properly, um, and it was insultive in many cases. Uh, some of the programmers that they, the, some of the, 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 the station programs, um, even the delivery and the delivery of it, it, it I just found it, it was too painful to watch or listen this, to on and many if, occasions. If I may, if I may, I'm gonna tell you something. And, and, and like, listen, positivity begets positivity, negativity begets negativity. So I always, even if there's negativity, I will always speak positivity into the circumstance, right? Um, working there, um, 
and, and this is what I feel about, I'm gonna go on the record and I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna quote John Browski and I'm gonna say, people might hate me for this, right? <laughs> All right, but it's, it, you know, it's really a cultural uh, query, right? I, I feel like urban black culture, I, I'm very confused about a lot because for me, you know, I call it vacation culture. What is vacation culture? Vacation culture where you only want to present, you know, the party, the hype, the excitement. You know, black culture is just partying. Woohoo! Everybody has six packs and we're always popping bottles and everything is always really good. Party music, party music, party music. What's what's flow 90, 93.5 right now? Party music, party music. There's no culture. There's no sustenance. There's no, um, they talk about radio personalities that have no personality. Yeah. Right? Right? No all y'all do is read the news and repeat whatever y'all supposed to say. There's, There's no, no personality or intelli intelligence, intelligence or depth there. there. Right? Yeah. Are they mm. interested in being there? Are they just there for the sake of the Well, that's what I'm wondering. How did they get there? So if I, you know, I'll, 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 I'll finish and let, yeah. you know, let a comment, right? Because so then being on the inside and then, you know, with the culture, I mean, if you don't, if you do not go with the flow of things, then you're a hater, right? And I'm like, I'm not a hater. You're dumb, right? You're like, you're not, you're not intelligent. You're like, just shut up. You're not. I don't want to hear your voice. What are you talking about right now? Yes. Mm. Right? Carry fire. We so are fire in here right now. Just, it's fire. Yeah. Are you saying as a black radio station, maybe we need to make sure that they are? We have a lot of people that really yeah. know. That, but, but you know what? You should be able to articulate yourself. But, in a cohesive way. But here, here's my thing, though, and I, I will get this thought out. I'm sorry, just let me get this thought out. So here, here's my thing, and it's the precursor. It is the basis. It is, the, it is the foundation of society as today. They don't. Who's they? Maybe we'll have another show about that. They don't want people who are proactive, who who think for themselves. They want pre-programmable shells of individuals that they can they can present any piece of information that they will absorb wholeheartedly without uh, taking the time to examine its contents, its relevance, and, and, and its accuracy. They don't want that. They don't want critical thinkers. They don't want deductive reasoning. They want people who are just going to reiterate whatever narrative they throw in front of them right. and to propagate okay. it to the masses. And so for individuals, it's, it's why I think my relationship with G987 dissolved after Fitzroy I passed away. And again, if Fitzroy was here, G987 would not be sold. But again, to Paula's point, corporate construct, corporate structure is, is very important. And so uh, so your vision can carry on even after you are not here. Right. Very true. Well, the bottom line, though, guys, is um, we could rant and rave and we'd all be in agreement that, you know, there's various different programs on that station. Station programming, absolutely horrendous. The right. the, the, the station hosts, uh, program hosts, absolutely. Some of them, I can use the word just buffoon and, um, you know, just real shameful. In, in many cases, there are certain, not every single show was a mess. No, some of the music shows, they were awesome. Um, Jonathan Shaw, fantastic, uh, you know, show that he, his music show, absolutely awesome. Um, the grapevine, I don't even have use for, to be honest, um, either. That was just a mess. But Here's where I'm going with this. The grapevine, though. I the think concept was good. Concept. The Great. delivery could never concept. keep me. Like I wouldn't, I couldn't listen to that show for more than 15 minutes because the grammar was so bad, and I, and I just, I couldn't, I couldn't go past that part. But did, did, um, did, this, did, this, did the station have a one dedicated hip hop show at all? all right, so, so it's interesting. And shout out to, shout out to Dave Matig. Did the station have one dedicated Saturday Night Hip Hop show? Yeah, so, so let me shout out, let me shout out Dave Mateague because we work. I worked with Dave Mateague for three years on creating a. Um, remember when Flo had their? Um, I can't remember what the show was called. Flo had a show uh, Wednesdays at, uh, at ten o'clock at night, and um, with, with SoundQuest, with uh, with, with uh, my man, with was it not Tyrone Boogeyman? Yeah, it was yeah. at. Um, Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, see, that. So, so I was working with Dave 
on getting on getting a hip hop show. But this this came up earlier because a thousand ways to skin a cat. So was it black radio? Was it Caribbean black? Right. It, right. So it was very difficult. I, I'm fortunate. Listen, I worked at Flow and worked at G987. I don't, I, I, you know, so there's very few people who could say that, right? And then I worked at CHRY before that. So I have a, a perspective and an understanding. I, I talked to Dem Denim Jolly as well as Fitzroy Gordon, you know, so I've, I've had that, that tutelage or that mentorship from both sides. And um, yeah, we were working on a hip shop, hop show. There definitely should have been a hip hop show. Look, man, look, Carrie, Carrie, you know, Carrie, you, you know me, dude. You know yeah. me, dude. You know me, dude. Yeah. Okay. I'll say right now, the fact that that wasn't even, didn't even happen, that tells me you weren't even trying. Nah. Straight up. Talk to, talk to Dave Matisse, Straight up. man. Talk to Straight Dave up. in there with me, and, man. And, 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 the, and, the, and that. And, and no, no one said anything. anything. And the fact that it went on for so long and no one said anything, I was like, man, this is a good thing I moved to Finland. Okay. All right. So let's move on. Let's move on. So clearly, um, clearly we're in agreement that there was a whole plethora of reasons why uh, that. It was way too Caribbean. It was. It was way too Caribbean. It was way it, it was, Why didn't they just call it the Jamaican station? Not even Caribbean, because Paula has a Kingston point. Has a Paula has a point. Show. It was not all that Caribbean. No. Because Caribbean, not. the Caribbean people think the Caribbean is just what? Jamaica and Barbados? Like uh, Trinidad? No. The Caribbean uh, has I, many, many, many more right. uh, encompasses. I think, up, many, I think the station ended up losing a lot of people. But when you're talking about the black when you're talking about the black the black community. Uh, and it's not just the Caribbean. We're talking about Africa. We're right. talking African African people here from every country in Africa. American people here, Black Canadians. So you know, it's a wide, diverse uh, in, in terms of the musical musical taste. It's like the white community is made up of. They may be the white community, but the Germans don't like the same music as, as Australians. Australians don't like the same music as Irish all the time. You know, that's I mean? right. You have to look at it from them terms too. Yeah, and Canadian black. I mean, what about our Canadian blacks? What about the Canadian blacks? They didn't. How many of the Canadian blacks were were you know in tune with it? So it, it just cut out so many people. And I'm gonna. My producer wants to jump in because my producer is of Af is 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 from Nigeria, um, and he wants to share his um, opinion on the matter too. And I I just want to bring something up to you. Here's how I knew, and I can speak about this from from many different angles. I have a right to the opinion, not just because I'm a member of the black community. But I was also a client of a 98.7, okay? And I gave them a shot. I gave them a shot. When I rebranded my, and I, 105, I, hey, everybody at 105, they know me. I'm, I'm like, I'm not new to the scene. Uh, I've been in business successfully for years. And I remember when I opened up one of my retail businesses many, many years ago, and I launched that business, a 105.5, actually, I was the very first the very first uh, uh, business, uh, which is that actually had a live from location broadcast, because 105 only used to do community uh, broadcasting, in which case they'd only do community events. So I was actually the the, the very first. So, um, and this is why I, I feel that I can speak to this. When I went to G98.7, I actually spent thousands of dollars with G98 because I wanted to give them a shot, right? And I uh, rebranded my business in 2015, gave them a shot, dropped a couple thousand dollars with them. The results were absolutely dismal. Why? Because I, I went away from my own playbook. I went away from my own playbook and, and I went in and invested in, this, in, the, in their reach only to, to realize that their reach, they were reaching to a demographic that A, they don't spend on that type of intellectual matter right? They don't invest in intellectual matters, which is what I was selling. I was selling intellect. And, um, and their, their audience really doesn't spend that kind of money. They're not a money spending audience. And, and you can tell that by the type of commercials that they had on air. I and mean, you listen to the commercials that they, that they had uh, versus, you know, a 98.1 or any of those other guys. So let's talk to some others um, and let's bring our producer, my producer, and my producer wants to just quickly chat, uh, give his opinion on uh, the whole state. 
of the conversation right now. Go well, ahead. Guys, I thank you very much for having me. I just thought I should chime in this way. And um, I've been listening to everybody since. But in my opinion, first of all, let's give uh, those, these guys the credit that they deserve. Uh, whether we like it or not, um, they did ignite something that we are building on today. Mm -hmm. Haven't sell that. I felt that let's talk to, about G98.7. Um, Africans was not represented at all. I'm an African person, and I happen to also be the president mm -hmm. and CEO of this station right right here. Number one, I think Africa was not. Well, y'all had African groove. African was not in, uh, represented at all because you have MC Bondi, which happens to also be my boy, which was just there for me for like I would call it one second every every week, every Saturday it was there for one second. The true African was not there. There was no cultural orientation, no cultural presentation. There was nothing affiliated to the Africans. Number one, number two, G, uh, the uh, me so rest in peace. He's a mentor to many of us. He was the face of the organization. So when he passed on, the face was gone. So mm -hmm. he needed somebody to be there. He needed to be in the background so people can run it. So that when he's not around, he can be an auto cruise. Uh, the third part of it is that um, he, in my own submissive opinion. Um, was not a Caribbean station and it was not an African station. It was something that we don't know. That's my own opinion because you can say that he didn't really 100% represent the, uh, the Caribbeans and I just said that there was no African at all in that place. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree. Uh, let, me, let me go in, please, if I, if I may, please. I, I kind of feel like I, I need to, if, if I yeah. may. Um, Here's my point. I'm not even going to speak to that to that to that sentiment. Thank you for sharing it. But what I find about human nature is that no one ever feels like they're pleased ever, and it's so curious to me because when you run after one people or you know one group of individuals, it's so curious to me how I don't want to say unappreciative, but I say unaware individuals are. Right. And it doesn't matter. So you can have a hundred people you're trying to please and 99 of them are not satisfied. And, and the reason why I say that, and, and that's what that comment reminds me of, is because MC Bonday was on every week. We know this. That's the but not only was he on every weekend, MC <laughs> Bonday did the morning, uh, not the morning show, sorry. He did everywhere. He yeah, was he did everywhere. everywhere. Um, Everybody they did the evening drive the show he's doing right now um four hours a day five yeah days he's a, getting a lot right? of exposure so you know so i know and so here's the politics west africa and east africa and the, the, it's, it's just um it's mind numbing and this is why i talked about fitzroy trying to you know tiptoe the line because no matter how much you do people don't appreciate it and and, and i got i'm so blessed that I got to speak to Fitzroy Gordon almost every single day. And not just speaking to him in boardroom meetings or speaking to him around people. My show was at nighttime. So oftentimes, which is why people are afraid of me, by the way. <laughs> uh, oftentimes, at the end of Fitzroy's day, when there's nobody else in the building, it's 9 o'clock at night, and Fitzroy, his day's ending, and Fitzroy comes in and sits down with me, and we talk for a half hour, 45 minutes. You know, happened two, three days a week for nine years or oh, seven years before he got sick. Right. And so why do I say that? I say that because there's a lot of insights and understanding that I have in respect to the bureaucracy and the behind the scenes politics that people need to know. Um, I would be the first to critique G987. I really would be the first. To critique. But, but you know what? Let, let, let me tell you something. Sorry, Jacqueline. I agree yeah. with you, Kerry, that you can't please everybody. They have some flavor that you need to have in some certain presentation when you are including an ethnic group or a cultural group. There is a generic flavor that you need to have in that presentation. And that's what was missing in my opinion. MC Body can be in all the shows 10 hours a day for all he, all he wants to do. That's fine. What's the flavor? What is that flavor representing that he needs to represent. Bro, what, what are you talking about? Bro, what, what are you talking about? MC Play, M okay, let me keep it real. MC Bondi has crazy flavor, crazy personality. He is the most prolific and most talented individual I know from that community. There's nobody who has presented him. MC Ebone, shout out Ebone, that's my dog. Um, there are people from that community that do their thing, but Bondi, first of all, one show a week for nine years, two hours, three hours a day, and then did morning show, 
drive show. Bondé did everything um, at that station. So uh, this is my point. Like, what are you talking about? Like, no, you know what though? I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree with, I'm gonna agree with Carry On. Bondé and Specs. They had the same profile. Very well represented. Could it be done better? I, maybe. Maybe yes, maybe no. But I think, but hold on. I think we're we're, t we're saying two different things here, but almost the same thing. So where I'm gonna agree with Carrie is that I do think MC Bondé was the best messenger from that community to deliver that genre of music. I do. I think he was the most prolific. He's an articulate, well balanced person. Uh, so I didn't see another representative from that community who could have outshone him or delivered that genre of music any better than he did. But I think where my producer's going, he's going somewhere different, right? Because Africa is a continent, it's not a country. So you got 54 countries in this continent. My God, I mean, you got, you can have five different African shows, uh, You can have literally. five different African radio stations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. it's hard, yeah. That that's a tough that's one, that, that's saying, really tough. That's why I was saying it was a difficult, it was difficult for Fitzroy Gordon because really he was trying to um, accommodate everybody's needs and can wants, I, desires I, and, you okay. know, where they weren't getting it anywhere else. And it was like, yeah. there is our saving hope and everybody's running to it. And yeah. you're just like, there's only 24 hours a day. Yeah, okay. Seven We're, days a week. Like, how are we fitting all of this in? I, I yeah. did want a hip hop show though. I, yeah. The same way we had a body show, show and the same right. way we had a sex show, show and the same way we had, had um, you know, the grapevine. Uh, and the like, same way we had soul jazz. jazz. I, I, wanted can I, I, got, I got a question. question. I, got, I got a question. What happened to this city? To the what? To the city? Yeah. When well, I left Toronto in 2001, we were playing after hour parties downtown where you could, we were playing African music, disco, funk, roller funk, hip hop, all within a four hour time frame. You trying to tell me a radio station can't do that in 24 hours? That's my oh, point. Did you, I, that's, that's a good one. That's, that's a my good point. point. That's all I've been saying. That's a good point. What happened to the programming? That's what I, I, that's I, what I, I said. Well, hold on, that's Carrie, Carrie, let me talk for a second. That's, that's a good point. WBLK does it this city, we right now. Good, we, we had some great DJs in the city. Dave Campbell, Paulie Lopez. Like, here's the, I'm a record company guy, right? I worked at Sony, and I know how Billboard's Top 100s work. And I understand that's what radio uses to program. So it just takes a little bit of brain power and some programming knowledge to fit in some good music and rotate it and make it work. I ain't seen that happen around here yet. It's a, when no, now, good point. We also yeah. need to keep in mind that we need to also get the buy-in from our artists here. And I think that a lot of our artists were disillusioned because they thought that this radio okay. station okay. was Okay, forget, forget all that, forget all that, forget all that. I ain't forget that. But you, need, you, but you yeah. need you need to have the buy-in from the community, from the artists, to sell the station. Okay, okay, no. What well, you not need? Totally, but you know I, what I'm saying. Nah, nah, nah. You know that's, that's kind of going backwards. That's kind of backwards. You what you need? You need a community. strong. Okay. And we need the I, voice. I agree, I agree with that. I agree with that. Agree. Uh, we there, need the voice. We, we do. We do. And John, I'm going to come back to you, but I'm going to say that we need some, there's something else that we needed. We, he needed huge influxes of money coming in on a consistent basis. And, and no, I'm going to go back to the money argument. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go back to the money argument. I'm going to go back to the, and this is why, this is why as a sales, as a sales trainer, Okay, I can size things up really quickly, just based on one thing, by who is advertising on your station. I can size it up real quickly as to how much money you're probably generating for that business based on your advertisers. The type of advertisers that they had on G98.7 were people like you and I. Okay, no, these are the people, no, dead, dead. So, so hold on. What they were doing is they were only feeding off of their own community. They were servicing music to, their, to, to, the, to this very small community and they were also selling this very small community ads as well. So remember, every, remember though, remember Jack, remember they had GM National. That wasn't, that that wasn't GM, GM local. local, they had GM, GM National. National. They had Kia they had National, National, right? right? Uh, so, so there, there are some, some really, really big, big national, national contracts. contracts. This, this is what, what I would say. say. 
So listen, listen everyone could always use more. I was so tired of those Miracle Arena commercials. I'm like, what the <laughs> hell? If um, I have to hear that crap one more time. Hey, shout out um, to Kevin Williams. Kevin Williams stepped to the plate. And I think we need to pay attention um, to people from the community. Kevin Williams stepped to the plate when he was president at GM. He spent and committed a sizable chunk of money. Uh, yeah. Again, at Kia, you know, there, there are car companies. There are and there, there are, there's four corporate record companies that would willingly take advertising out of black radio. If there's oh, some good man. black radio. Yeah, let, 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 hey, let's keep, I, I like that you brought that up. Listen, because we all know for 10 years, the, the record companies have not spent money, right? The only time co record companies spend money, yeah. if it's something for sure. Carrie, 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 Carrie. You know, no there, there are no pools, no record pools anymore. You know why, Carrie? No you know why, Carrie? You know why, Carrie? Companies don't spend money, fam. You know, you know why, Carrie? You know why? Because they're not making the money. They're not generating the, the resources that they were. They're not generating okay. money. They're not selling okay. records anymore. People are streaming. All right, no, John, Canada, John, jump yeah, in. Give us your I'll opinion. You we're going to attack the last topic. John, jump in. Give us okay, your opinion right real quick. Last Carrie, topic of the day, because clearly Carrie, we've got to do a part two on this. Carrie, 2001, me, Russ Herger, Morgan, we bounced. And you notice when we all bounced, everything started working backwards here. There was no, uh, we lost a lot of, we weren't trying uh, to do the, it here. The though, industry though. also evolved, right? The industry yeah, went it on, did. Yeah, but evolved into what, though? You, you but see the industry what? is online, though. That's, Carrie, that's the Carrie, 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 look what, Carrie, records, Carrie. No people people look, don't buy CDs anymore. HMV Carrie, doesn't exist. I understand. I ain't talking about right? that. I ain't no talking, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. Right? But you said something funny just now. Look what it had evolved into. You're right. Look yeah, what it's evolved into. Though. You're right. Look what it's evolved into. Yeah, but John, I'm not talking about the technology. I'm just talking about... The knowledge of the people within the industry that could have helped to push it along. Oh, and when, of course. Oh, and when, okay. and when, and when those guys are like, but, "Nothing we could do," but look, those guys. Listen, we had, and, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just give me a second, Jack. Okay. We, listen, Canada had the most prolific, the, the most impactful minds uh, in the world. Not and in, that's what got you Drake. That's why you got Drake today. Mr. Mr. Morgan, like and come that's on. That's why you got Drake today. It's because Mr. of Morgan, all, yeah. right? Russ Herger, yeah, and, and I can do a show on, you know, Russ Herger had a deal with Jay-Z and Rockefeller from 96 that Virgin turned down because, you know, Jay-Z wanted too much money. They offered Jay-Z 20 grand, Jay-Z wanted 100 grand. And, <laughs> and we're talking about Canadian record company guys that don't exist anymore, and that's exactly yeah. the point. Yeah, so, yeah, 100%. A, a, a lot of that knowledge. Yeah, 100%. Just mm -hmm. left because it wasn't being utilized, and I think 100%. It, it played. Well, out then you know how... what though, John. But John, and that you know what to your to, to your point. And then it affects um, radio because it affects like we don't course. have the guys. We don't have the guys that know how to market radio. To we got. I gotta radio. cut in, guys. Guys, I gotta cut in. I gotta cut in because clearly we need a um, we need a part two on this. We have one more topic to to touch on. Uh, before we cut, we wrap up this, but clearly we need a part two on because this is explosive and everyone's got some valid points. Let's fast track now to where we are right now today. And for those viewers and listeners that are watching that might feel offended by any per comments that have been made, they are uh, opinions of the individuals uh, in this panel and uh, we all have a right to our opinions and it's based on our experience, our lived experiences. So everybody on this panel, uh, in my personal opinion, is speaking from a place of knowledge and we have very, very uh, knowledgeable and even an insider uh, with us today. So I'm very, very comfortable with the information that's been shared. So fast track to where we are right now. So Mr. Nettie P. Ray, he is the new owner of G98.7. Does everybody know that? Has Net it been approved by the CRTC yet? Netty P. Ray is the new owner. Let me tell you a little bit about him. He's not black. That's for one thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Surprise, surprise. Okay. He's, <laughs> he's not black. But what he is, and it goes to me and Paula, he's a businessman. He's a successful businessman. He's an experienced investor in the broadcasting industry with radio stations in Ontario and Quebec. And uh, he was the uh, 
the it was announced that he was the winning bidder for the ownership of G98.7, which had uh, been on air since 2011. The sale executed through a court-ordered receivership is pending final approval from CRTC, but he's going to get it. He's going to get it. So um, he, he prepared a statement, and this is the statement that he made, the only statement that's on record that he's made since taking ownership of the station. He said, while I prepare to undertake the task of bringing the much needed stability to G98.7, the long-term mission remains the same as envisioned in its original CRTC application. It is to serve the Caribbean, African, and black communities of the GTA. And that was the only statement that is on record that he has made, okay? So, a little bit of background as to this, this, this gentleman now. So, NETI, is the, the new ownership is going to provide much needed stability that the station has been lacking for carry years it has been uncovered not just recently years this will allow the station to grow and focus on providing high quality programming the station's financial troubles came to light last year so just because the financial troubles came to light that doesn't mean they didn't exist so what they're saying is this this has been going on for a while it only came to light after the death of its founder and president Fitzroy Gordon and a call was later put out for interested wait I'm not done because here comes the kicker a call was later uh, put out for interested individuals and the company's bid was made an online petition went out over 10,000 signatures People were in an uproar. They were saying, we got to keep this station black. This is the only uh, black uh, space that we have left. No, we're not letting it go down this way. But according to documents from the receiver and Farber and Partners, there was absolutely not one single bid submitted by a black-owned business. Now, y'all talking about you love G98, all oh, G98, G9, we got to keep it, but not one single, let me tell you something, not one single person, even if they got denied the bid, even if the bid got rejected, not one single person put in a bid. And you know how much Nettie P. Ray walked away with right now, with the ownership, you know how much he was able to acquire that with? Uh, $250,000. $250,000. Hundred and fifty thousand dollars he put on the table, and and that is what got him the winning bid. Uh, as a down pay, as a down now he's going to go away and get his finances together, get his backers. But that's all. Well, two hundred fifty thousand. What? I'm going to just that, stop that's talking. A, I, I, I think exactly there's more to these. I no, think there's, there's not more any these. more to it. There is no more to it. It's called two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and an application. That's what it's and called. And you know what? It costs millions to get a radio station. He got this for, for a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, that tells you a lot. Well, the thing is, that is what was put on the table at the time of the offer, right? That's how much he's willing mm -hmm. to put down as, a, as his de de deposit, okay, um, on it. And then that allows now the bid to be accepted. And then he now goes away and he's going to go get his financial backers. He's going to go get his advertisers. All everyone's going to get lined up. But that's the only out of pocket money that it's going to cost him. I guarantee you that 250 because he's. Let me ask you this, though. What about this? Pay for the, the, the um, outstanding um, bills. Well, he'll lot. use other people's money. Mm. And that's how business people are what they're supposed to do. But, but, it's not supposed to cost you. Uh, Kenny, You're supposed to uh, OAP. Jacqueline, Kenny, Kenny here. Yeah, let, let me quickly say this. There's more to this that we may understand. There, there should be more to this that we may, we may understand. It's not just as you are reading it, Jacqueline. It is. I, I don't think I don't think it's that easy. It was a drive through like that and wouldn't come true. Uh, I, as a community member, I don't... Uh, I think we, you we, know what? I, I, I don't like the way you are going. I'm about sorry. It. I'm sorry you don't like it. I'm sorry, but there's one thing I pride myself on, and it's it's by getting facts. Okay, I make sure I do my research. Uh, I make sure I pull uh, the information from all the necessary places. And it says multicultural broadcaster Mr. Netty P. Ray, who owns, by the way, 
uh, CINA, Cina FM in Windsor. He also owns Cina 1650 AM in Mississauga. Among other stations is the successful bidder for Toronto's G98.7. Uh, pending CRTC approval. Until that happens, Intercity Broadcasting Network, which is Fitzroy's organization, will continue to manage and operate the station under the supervision of the receiver. In the meantime, Ray has put up $250,000 in interim financing. That's it. What a shame. But you, you can't be mad at him, though. Why? Why? Because he, you know, it's business. You know, the, the, it's not like it was in a secret. So if people wanted to invest, they could have, and they chose not to. They did not. Yeah. They ch you know why, Paula? I'm going to say it before, you know, because we're going to wrap up in like five minutes here. You know why they didn't invest? Because they themselves did not see the value. There, we have enough wealthy black business people in our community. You don't, you don't even have to be wealthy to have 250000 matter of fact. But, you know, we have enough successful black business people in our community that could have easily bid on that. But they chose not to. And that's because they didn't see the value. And the reason that they didn't see the value is because of the current programming, the current lineup of hosts, and the current way things run. And they couldn't, they couldn't see how it could become viable. Am I wrong or right? Somebody knock, tell me I'm wrong. I think that um, I think that they may have been hesitant because of uh, what has what has happened, what happened to Flo and what was happening to G98 in terms of, you know, um, possibly being pushed out of the of the industry. And, you know, is their money just going to, you know, disappear? Um, I, I feel that that was probably a fear, a, a fear for them. Maybe. Carrie, do you have an opinion on that? Let me hear from everyone and, uh, and then I will. Okay. Uh, uh, I, Spider? I have, I, have, I have tangible, substantiated insight. Okay. That, okay. Know, okay. Spider? Netty P. Ray is the new owner of G98.7. He's not black. None of the black people bid on it. Black people don't care. What do you say about that? Oh, I'm sorry, we can't hear you. Let me move over to John until we get your audio fixed. John, you heard what I said. Yeah, I think um, it's different here now. I, I think Speak people, up, John. I think, I think it's, it's different, different here now. now. I, think I think people have kind of moved on. on. Um, I'm, I'm 55, 55 now, now, so... Um, John? I really don't... I, 55, John. It's a good-looking 55, bro. You're like, you're good. <laughs> you're... Well, fine wine, bro. Fine wine. It's. Uh, I just. I just don't think people are into it anymore, and I think that's that. what's happened. So can have I think word. people have have done. Here's the thing. I think people have done without a black radio, a consistent one for so long that now it's just they don't care. They don't I think care. they've also moved on to other formats. Yeah. As well, okay. you know, they've they've you know, if you can't find it where you want it, you're going to go somewhere else to get it. Yeah. Okay. I think also, yeah. a lot of yeah. people have gone online. They have created their own stations. They've, yeah. you know, um, so I think that that, and I and I also feel like somewhere in there, the youth or the community somehow lost faith and just decided, yeah. you know, I don't know. And, and, and so if I may, okay. really, and I, I, I'll condense this as quickly as I can. Yeah. Um, 2016, 2017, 2018, you know, people who know who uh, Michael Workley is, you know, like Mike, Mike is my guy. And we had talked to um, uh, Fitzroy about different scenarios and different options. Uh, there was a lot of, again, behind the scenes maneuvering. Uh, the shotgun clause was invoked against um, uh, Fitzroy Gordon's owning interest in, in uh, and of course, uh, G987 FM in 2017. He had to, he had to pay out the uh, his investors at the time, and he went from owning 51% to owning 81% of the company because of that shotgun clause. Um, here's my thing, and this is what this is this, when we talk about the the black 
media moving forward. It, I'm going to answer it in that vein in, in, in consideration of that sentiment that we have a Willie Lynch type deep seated divide, a divide and conquer, a crabs in a barrel, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Right. There is a, a, a cultural nuance, yeah. whereas we are so easily dissuaded from supporting each other. It is so, we are so quick to denounce demonstratively, you know, the shortcomings. Hey, Fitzroy Gordon had shortcomings, newsflash, right? He wasn't perfect, right? But the sentiment and the passion and the commitment that he devoted to what he manifested out of his vision and will is something that warrants regard, right? Being said, there's a lot of people, Wes Hall, talk to that dude. Wayne Perbu, talk to the, These are guys who could have bought that with their tax write-off. You know, what they spend yearly on entertainment, right? Like, like afterthought money, right? Things like lint, you know, when you find a quarter in your pocket, that's how Wes Hall and, and Wayne Perbu, how these, <laughs> how these guys have money. And, and this is where the disconnect comes in. I'm surprised no party promoter is someone had bought that for that rate. Right? But so there's so many people that I consulted with. There's so many people who paid me to consult. Right? Now I understand there G987 FM owes me eighteen thousand dollars. I want that money, by the way. Pay! So I will, I will You're never go, gonna I'm get gonna it. say that, right? I will say that. You're never gonna get it. Well, so he might right? get it. He might he get, get it because right. He might get it. Um, and is Spider back? Or uh, sorry, my producer was just saying something. He, he, we lost Spider. But you might get it because um, with this purchase, uh, he's going to have to cover off the debt. He's going to have to cover off the debt for G98. And if you have filed, you know, you know legally, uh, as you know, an individual who who they are indebted to. Then you could very well get your money, right. you know, with this new guy. And and, and, and that's just my point that there 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 are liabilities there, and right. I think that a lot of prudent investors, and this is my whole point, mm -hmm. a lot of prudent investors, not knowing where all the bodies were laid, you know, decided decided against it. But here's my thing: Do we think that Denim or Fitzroy's decision to want to own or and, and a, a, a media outlet, was that prudent? Was that their best? It, were there not other opportunities that may have been better suited or uh, stood to have a better return on their investment? I'm gonna no. talk, I'm gonna just jump in really quick and I'm gonna say, yeah, you know what? For Denim's, from Denim's perspective, it was a good idea because Denim brought the best thing to the table when he opened up Flow and that was his business knowledge. He was a businessman, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and, and, and Fitzroy was just not a businessman, okay? Yeah. And, and that's the, this is why I say all the time, not every Jamaican cook should open up a restaurant, okay? Uh, Y'all just, you know, you, we, we, have, we, we, we have our issues in the business area. What, what business owners need to do uh, is not just come up with great concepts, uh, but they also need to educate themselves on how to run a business. But and, Denim, and, but Denim, Denim had Underground Railroad. That didn't work, right? So here's my point. My point is that Denim could have undertaken, and I'm sure he has undertaken many business endeavors since that time. He had many more prosperous, more profitable, more promising, you know, um, opportunities presented to him, Denim did, I'm sure, but I'm certain that the importance um, was thrust upon him in respects to, as a black man, having a representative voice in the media space. And so okay. I think even though Denim had the money and he was a businessman, I think that there's a hundred different businesses that would have showed him a better return. Probably. Than, right, right? Yeah, but I, yeah. I, th I think there was a personal Right. Yeah. I, I think it was a personal decision, Denim and the Fitzroy's. The Fitz, you know, I'm gonna say this right now. Fitzroy lived in his car. 
You know, people said Fitzroy is taking this money. He's not really opening a radio station. He's just trying to live the life. Meanwhile, this man was devoting everything he had in himself. Black people, we tear each other down continually. And I tell you that, you know, a Willie Lynch thing, a mind control thing, an adverse interest thing, you know, why every other community has a visible presence. And a well, voice. I mean, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to push back on that one. And yes, you know, we do have our issues, internal issues with each other. But I don't think that we as a black community, community should take any ownership for that G98 debacle. Okay, the only people that should take ownership for it are the owners and management of that station because they could have made something with that station bigger than what it already well, what so, they and did. So, but, and and it's not line. fair if we criticize G998, if we're not criticizing it from a pers from a point uh, perspective of being a hater, we're c criticizing it because we are a member of that community and we have a right to voice our opinion. Wait, wait, wait. Can, I was can you hold on a minute? I was there, excuse me. I was there, worked there for nine years. Um, and so here's my thing, that I saw firsthand people who came into the institution, institution to, to undermine, undermine it. it. I seen first, I saw a, a news article posted by an individual who accused Fitzroy Gordon of financial improprieties that he was the commanding, he was the CFO. You were the CFO of the time that these alleged um, incidents, issues occurred. So you would have been at the helm, but now you're going to run to the media to, to tell the media about these same indiscretions. But however, you were the CFO at the time of those indiscretions. So it, what, what's my point? My point is that all skin is not kin. There are people in your life that may present themselves as, as, as um, you know, colleagues that are not colleagues. That's right. fair. That's fair. Well, who's doing the interviewing? Anyways, listen, we don't, that's a whole conversation for another day. I mean, um, but, but I, I see your point. Um, my producer, did you have something to say before we wrap up the show? Yes, I just want to quickly say this. This is very interesting because it's right on my aisle. Uh, I think there is enough blame to be, to, to share, uh, from the management, the community, there's enough, enough blame to be shared because if we support our own wholeheartedly, we will see that we will, we will, we will strive more and we will, uh, we, will, we will go more further than where we are. That's number one. Uh, but it's visible to the blind and audible to the, to the dev that uh, the management also have issues and so on. So all we can do, first of all, let's give them credit because at least we are set it, using them now as a case study, which is good. Mm -hmm. What do we do tomorrow to avoid those errors, those mistakes? If there is a blame on our end, how do we not repeat those blame or those errors that we have done? And if there's an error they have done or on their part, how do we avoid this? And whatever they have done good, done best, how do we amplify that to uh, better serve our community? Okay, good point. I think we need criteria, you know, like when they're on the boardroom, it's not, you know, I know Carrie and, oh, he's like my best bud and we go yeah, for, right. uh, I, let's get him. No, here's the criteria. Yes. Does he fit it? If he doesn't fit it, then no. Yes. And it's, and, and and that's the bottom line. Right. What's exactly? Exactly. Period. You're absolutely no. correct. What's up with the friends and family thing? Not you know what I mean? Not my cousin. Not my niece. No. Not your no. daughter. Are they, yeah. Uh, can they do the job? Can they deliver? Are yep. they one hundred percent? Can they do content? Are they able to be online? Can they do Twitter? Can they do Instagram? You need people that can work. That We're can competent. actually do the job. Right. Not because they're like your friend. Yeah. They or they patronize you. Much. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Get professionalism in there and you will see a change. Yeah. Hire the best possible individual for the position. Not, not your friend, us. not your best friend's son or daughter. The right. best qualified and, and that's Paula. Yeah. I can one, I'm 100% in agreement with you as well, Paula. Um, if that is the best investment you could have made is in qualified staff and, um, and qualified staff members that can 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 they, they embrace the entire the black table. community if, but if you don't have that background and experience you can't bring anything to the table to move me forward i'm staying in the right. same place yeah. like why didn't they attract me why didn't they attract me as an avid listener because there was nothing there for me there was nothing it didn't feed me it did not feed me other than one 
you know, that, it just didn't feed me, right? Um, but nonetheless, I, before we cut off, I do want our listeners uh, and our viewers to know that our discussions today are based on our personal opinions and that uh, that is why we decided to come together and share them. Clearly, that our personal opinions do uh, also mimic the personal opinions of the general community because nobody put a bid on this station. So we're not the only ones who felt that there was no value there. Obviously, every single other person in the black community felt the same way because we don't own it anymore. We don't own it, okay? I think that there way, there, I wanna just say that I think that there would have, there probably are people that would have wanted to do something, but they just weren't in the financial position to do it either. So I think that's Absolutely. also a factor. Maybe, you know? maybe, but yeah. maybe. Okay, um, we do have the utmost respect for the founder of uh, G98.7, Mr. Fitzroy Gordon. And mm -hmm. uh, in all due respect, we honor him and will continue to honor his legacy uh, for being a pioneer in this industry and bringing forward to us uh, a station that we did call our own, even if it was just for that short period of time. We now have turned over our history over to this gentleman called Mr. Neti P. Ray. And what we have to do as a community is we have to hold him accountable. And we have to ensure that our voice is heard and that the messaging does not die out, uh, would be my suggestion. Ladies and gentlemen, we have had the most fluid discussion that I've had on any topic in years here today. We've gone well over our time. And I can, look, I can tell you that I look forward to having a part two uh, mm -hmm. in the future because I believe that we are not done with this no. uh, topic just yet. We just scratch in the surface on this one. There's a lot more to come. Uh, there's a lot more we're going to find out about uh, what went on at G98.7, ladies and gentlemen. I have a feeling you're gonna, it's gonna, the information that's going to trickle out uh, is going to blow your mind. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say, leave, uh, let my co all of my panel members say goodbye before I sign off for on another show of the Ordinary People Show. And we'll start with uh, Carrie. Uh, take it away. Hey, again, Jack, thank you so much for having me. Uh, to your support, crew, your technical staff, you guys, an amazing job. Very humble to be able to have, have shared this platform with, again, such an esteemed uh, in a group of individuals. Uh, the Order of Kent, my man, Spider Jones, the champ. The champ is here, or he was here. He's not here right now. Um, Paula, and as well, of course, John Brosky. You know what? I, I just encourage you to, to keep the dialogue moving forward. It's not about agreeing or disagreeing. It's about having the dialogue, because dialogue moves us forward. It's not knowledge, but knowledge applied that's power. So they acquire that knowledge is the acquisition of our power. So they acquire that power to be able to share with each other. That they acquire that knowledge in order to share our power together is an amazing thing. So thank you for having me. Thank amazing. you. Thank you. John, go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, Jack, for having me, Paula. Carrie, good to see you, dude. The camera the last yo, moment, send me so. your number, family. Send, yo, look, check, check the link. Check the, uh, check the... <laughs> look at that. That is, that's, that's old school. school. That is like the, the foundation. Family. Russ Herger, yeah. that's what I mean. Like, like that's, yeah. that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's So, yeah, so yeah, I still, I still, I still, I'm still in contact with Morgan and Russ and everything. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So, we're still out there doing our thing. Morgan's but thank you, man. Having, Morgan, man, I mean. Yeah. So, but thank you for having us because um, you, you don't hear from guys like us too often. That's right. That's right. And, Foundation uh, pillars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it, uh, and, and, I, and I can see it too. And, and uh, sometimes I think if we had probably stayed and done more work and probably had been more effective and probably had to put our foot down even more, who knows what would have happened. But, it, right. you know, it is what it is. And uh, But I think the city's in a very tough place right now. The country. Yeah, the country. Thank you. Too. Thank you, John. And Paula. Yeah, I thank you for having me on the show and uh, being able to share my thoughts. Um, I I'm feeling positive actually about um, the radio station. I think that as a community we can um, still kind of direct it in a way that is going to be positive for us. Um, that we don't have to give up all hope. Um, and um, you know, again, like John yeah. says, you know, it is what it is. We just now, and as Carrie said, it's moving forward. Yeah. It's time to move forward now and yeah. see what we can do. Uh, I think that, you know, the station would do really well to be uh, a, a stronger presence, of course, this, from social media standpoint that I'm, I'm going, going from, um, you know, a stronger presence on online, which I 
found that you know their website isn't really regularly updated and people go there for information yeah, and, that's true and they I want do. you to be their source you yeah. want to be their source and they want you to be their source yeah. so if you if you want that uh, two-way connection to continually happen you've got to do that part too so Wonderful. Yes, Thank you so much. Listen, guys, I value all of you and I look forward to inviting you all back in the near future for a part two, because I know right. that my phone's going to be ringing off the hook on this one for sure. And I just want to thank you for joining me today on this hot button topic of the future of black radio in Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning into the Ordinary People Show today. My name is Jacqueline Dixon. I'm your host. I'm here each and every Saturday from 1230 to 1:30 Eastern Standard Time right here on GBKM TV Network. Until next week, same time, same place. Cheers. Hello, my name is Ryan Knight the co-founder and executive director of the Afro-Caribbean Business Network Foundation. I am here excited to announce the new microloan program that we have put together. With the support of Alterna Savings Credit Union and the partnership of Setsi, Empowered Forex, and the Dream Legacy Foundation, we're gonna be helping more entrepreneurs of African and Caribbean heritage get access to funding and help with their grant writing. Please visit our website, acbncanada.com, to learn more if you're an entrepreneur that's in need of funding or if you would love to support this organization. Hello, my name is Ryan Knight, the co-founder and executive director of the Afro-Caribbean Business Network Foundation. I am here excited to announce the new microloan program that we have put together. With the support of Alterna Savings Credit Union and the partnership of Setsi, Empowered Forex, and the Dream Legacy Foundation, we're gonna be helping more entrepreneurs of African and Caribbean heritage get access to funding and help with their grant writing. Please visit our website, acbncanada.com, to learn more if you're an entrepreneur that's in need of funding or if you would love to support this organization. Hello, my name is Ryan Knight, the co-founder and executive